In this video, we are going to look at how you can use Milborns as a vehicle for practicing place value and trading. This is a car racing game and it appeals to my five-year-old gearhead's need for speed. So let's start our engines and find out how this game plays. I'm Leanne and I've taught kids for almost 20 years. I help parents have fun while teaching them and their kids the skills that they need. So if this is something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Make sure to stick around at the end of this video for all the modifications and the tweaks that will help you feel more accomplished when using this game to reinforce their learning. And don't forget to check out the description box below. I will post the links to all the games and the videos that I mentioned today. This is a great family game for the less experienced or the younger set of kids, especially if you have kids who love cars. Of this group, the players who are learning and practicing their place values will stand to gain heaps of practice if you're keeping track of their scores with the learning abacus. This is key to the modifications that we will share, so make sure you stay for that. Using this abacus, you can gradually rev up the game's complexity as kids become more comfortable with trading in the different place values. This game is useful because keeping score and track of the distance you've covered using the learning abacus is a practice in constant trading from ones, tens, and hundreds until you get to a thousand. In the tin, you get 106 cards, of which are distance cards, traffic light cards made up of 14 green and 5 red stoplights, hazard cards, 4 of each, out of gas, flat tyre, accident and speed limit, and the requisite remedy cards, gas, spare tyre, repairs and end of speed limit. And lastly, four coupe furry cards, which are special remedy cards that I will explain at the end of the video. In this game, you are a driver trying to be the first one to make it to a thousand milestones. That's the distance marker used on French roads. At the start, each player is given six cards and draws one more at the beginning of their turn from the draw pile or the discard pile. Then they decide which card to play from their hand into their tableau of cards on their play area. This is also known as their driving zone or driving panel. This is essentially a hand management or resource management game. Young gamers get the autonomy of making decisions about what their car should do instead of being solely dice driven. And that translates to kids thinking about the actual value of each card. To begin driving as you do on the road, the first card must be a green light to indicate go. In subsequent turns, you can play distance cards into your driving zone or play hazard cards into your opponent's driving zone to slow them down. Each hazard card must be remedied in order to continue. The first one to rack up a thousand milestones wins the game. One thousand and and one hundred and eighty four. Now all that I have said is based upon what we use to keep score and we use the activities for learning abacus. The back side of the abacus is meant to be read in portrait with the ones, tens, hundreds and thousands clearly on the top side. This is where kids will enter their score and make the trade. Kids enter the milestones that they play into each round into their abacus. When any of those place values exceed 10, it triggers a trading event on the abacus. So, let's talk about actually using this game to introduce, teach, and practice place value and trading. The first thing I'd actually do is to make sure that kids have a basic concept on place value and how to trade. To do this, we can play a basic version of the game by using UNO or playing cards with the learning abacus and play to 100. If you want to learn how we use those cards with the abacus to do this, make sure to click or tap the card up here or check it out after this video since I have more modifications 
you can use with this game. Now, kids don't have to have place value and trading completely mastered yet, but the point is to make sure that they have a basic idea of the place values and how they change. So let's change gears now on using Melbourne's distance cards and nothing else for now. We do this to focus solely on the mechanics of entering the distance markers. If you want more practice, use only the 25, 50 and the 75 milestone cards. Those pesky fives will keep the kids trading in the ones for much longer. Ramping up, now we add in the traffic light cards to play the game. At this stage, I still want them to get plenty of practice with place value and trading, so I don't want too many cards to water down the deck and draw out the game longer than it needs to be while they are still focused on keeping score. The point now is to start introducing the different hazard cards and how to use them in the game. Before we get to the rest of the modifications, I would love it if you'd like this video and comment down below. What fast car would you play if you were playing this game? Once the kids are cruising with the place value and trading and know how hazard cards can be used to slow down opponents, it's time to introduce the rest of the hazard cards and the remedies each time we play. That way the game builds up in complexity and kids have the opportunity to learn about each card and how best to use them under which circumstances. My favourite to start with is Speed Limit because it means the larger numbers can't be used yet and the smaller numbers with those fives still gives players plenty of trading practice. And then we start slowly playing the game with a full deck of cards as it is meant to be played. Now this is the last stretch. We are almost to the checkered flag of playing the game as it is stated in the rule book. If you want to make sure they get place value practice, then keep using the abacus. I still do it when we play as a family. But if you drop the learning abacus now, it will make for a great mental addition of double digit numbers and calls on each player to keep track of themselves. Otherwise, they'll have to keep adding. One last thing that I haven't talked about yet are the coupe for cards. This is a French term from fencing to counter thrust an opponent's attack. So in this game, there are four of these in the deck that you could use from your hand anytime to give you 100 miles. But if you held them back until a corresponding hazard card was played, you could earn 200 points instead. It's a card game about racing, which you might find it hard to believe are actually not that common for this age range. It's a different mechanic and style from the usual dice-driven race to the finish games, which also adds a novelty. And the kid appeal means you can get in so much math practice while they are having fun. If you want to find out about other math games to help with practicing instead of doing another boring worksheet, make sure to check out the playlist at the end of this video. Or check out the other videos listed in the description box on using games to teach kids. And I can't wait to see you in a future one. Let's